there's a chillness in the air. Winter is coming. The north wind blows southbound with change. In all seriousness though, uh, there is a cool breeze in the air. It is officially September and it's also Saturday morning. And we got Zeus here and me. And we're coming to the shop today because we got some organization stuff to do and some digitization to do stuff. So we're going to get ready for a random boring day in the shop. Hi, my name's Dave. And I've spent most of my life outdoors here in Canada's western frontier. I believe one thing to be true. Outside is therapy. It's where we both reconnect and disconnect. I hope you come with me as we build, explore, and repeat. Right, guys it's um it's monday it's monday the week after expo we're here at the uh Yuka pack shop and uh ralph from summit expedition trucks has stopped by he's donating a short box tacoma box just so us we can do uh fit up and testing and measuring and all that jazz uh for this short box tacoma that we're doing um, but we're also going to be doing something really cool with ralph here coming up in the next few months here we're going to be partnering with set on a neat little project um something to just help keep the camper game strong so yeah it's gonna be good it's gonna be good i don't know how much i can tell you guys yet um we got to keep it on the hush hush but there's stuff happening stuff happening this year so yeah uh if you're new here i want to encourage you guys to smash that like and subscribe button um we're small but we're mighty and it really is the uh, the best way to help support the channel because honestly, there's a lot of old old YouTubers out there, and I shouldn't say old YouTubers out there. Um, there is a ton of original YouTubers out there that have paved the way for a lot of creators like myself. Um, so we want to give them the credit due, but we also want to help encourage those new up and comers like Blind Man Outdoors and G from BC and Overland Alberta. But today, specifically, what are we gonna do today? I think today specifically we're going to go through some truck stuff. There's some truck stuff that needs to be updated. Uh, we got some seriously, we got some new stuff going on with the truck. Uh, man, I, do I have a receding hairline? I do. I do. That's all right. But yeah, we're going to do some truck stuff today, guys, and uh, talk about the Nissan Frontier and what's been done to it recently and go from there. So let's get into it. I am very handsome. Thank you. And you are very handsome. Here's that. Like a very, among very men. handsome. <laughs> I got about. <laughs> See you, boys. Georgie, Porgy. Georgie, Porgy. Hi, Georgie. Hey, there he is. What's good, man? I'm safety today. I'm safety, bud. No, I'm I'm really safety. You got best friend to life. Oh, 
<laughs> He's just hiding everywhere. <laughs> just pokes out. You guys want to fight? Should we plan to do like a trip before snow? I mean, yeah, Should we do a trip anyway? Oh yeah. That was a good one. Yeah. All right, let's do it. We are in the Adventure Factory and we're doing some tinkering. We've got uh, two Yucca Pack platforms that are about to receive their, well, the Dodge Ram is gonna get its primary assembly done and the Yucca Pack is gonna start on final assembly. So the, the, the Tacoma short bed is currently being prepped for powder and the Dodge Ram Cedric, yours is getting, getting prepped and welded as we speak. So um, what we're gonna do guys is I'm gonna go through some of the stuff that we're gonna need for winter, September is right around the corner. And you know that means that we're gonna be expecting some snow here pretty quick in central Alberta. And uh, I just wanna make sure the truck is good to go for the winter. Uh, we've made a lot of changes to this thing as you guys know, uh, especially recently, but we also made some changes over the year that I have now had on the truck for about a year. And I'm gonna to touch base. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm basically gonna go, go through those things with you guys and tell you what I think and uh, if it's something that you should consider if you're building a, an adventure truck uh, or an overland build or whatever you want to call them. Uh, my truck is commonly referred to as an adventure truck because it, uh, although it does take me over land, um, I have yet to cross any substantial borders other than the American border um, with it. So we're going to go through the adventure truck and uh, yeah, I don't have much else for you guys, unfortunately, other than that. So it might be some, it might be old dog, it might be old hat or second hat or whatever the heck you call it. But we're going to do it anyway because it's the end of the season. We're coming now into the fall, uh, which is my favorite time to camp. There's less bugs, temperatures are moderate, and we get nice cool nights. So hanging out by the campfire in some sweatpants and a hoodie is pretty well my jam. All right, let's do this. So you've been on YouTube for a while. You're watching a lot of really cool videos for a lot of awesome content creators. And uh, you've now decided that, you know what, maybe I want to get out more. Maybe I want to explore more. But I don't necessarily have a pickup truck or I only have a minivan or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Where do I start? What do I do? <clears throat> and a really good way to do this, and, and this is something that I've explained to nearly everybody who's ever asked me is, you can, you, you'll be surprised what you can accomplish and where you can get using the vehicle that you currently have and a little bit of ingenuity. It doesn't really matter what kind of ARV you're attempting to build. Uh, an, an ARV is just an adventure ready vehicle. So an ARV could be anything that you have that you have modified or even purchased for the sole purpose of adventure travel. And these vehicles can range anywhere from uh, a small compact car to a full-size Unimog with a camper conversion on it. Uh, and there's, it's really limitless as to what you can do because there's a whole, spe specifically in North America here, there's a whole variety of places and things you can experience as an adventure traveler that you don't necessarily need 4x4 to get to or all-terrain tires to get to. Your vehicle is really going to depend, what you're going to need for an ARV is really going to depend on, well, three questions really where what and how long um, where are you going where are you coming from uh, these things are important to consider because your geographical location is actually quite important because it's going to tell you what kind of seasons you have to deal with uh, up here in canada for example we have two seasons that we need to deal with so we get very very hot and dry in the summer we can get very very cold in the winter another thing that you need to consider is your what so what are you doing you know and what kind of of environmental considerations do you need to consider when you're building your ARV? Uh, are you doing a lot of gravel travel? Are you planning on taking any trails? Um, you know, what specifically is your goal as an adventurer or an adventure traveler? Are you a photographer? Are you a hunter? Are you a, you know, a blogger or a vlogger? Um, and where are you going and what do you, what are you going to need to be able to be successful in your, uh, in your adventure? 
Um, and then lastly, uh, how long? So how long are you gonna be out there uh, doing what you're doing? If you're going out and gonna do some prospecting and some panning, how long will you be doing that? And what equipment are you gonna need to do that? These are the three questions that you need to ask. And as long as you, and these are gonna be different for everybody, obviously, right? But as long as you can answer those questions uh, and then find a way that your current vehicle can actually make those things happen. This is why the Overland Vehicle Build and the DIY Builds are so popular on the internet because it really can take something from as small as a Nissan Micra um, all the way up to you know a fully loaded Nissan Frontier. Within those three questions, you're also gonna have what equipment are you gonna need and do you, are, do you require any training? I truly do believe that training um, really should come before the equipment and then let your training to dictate what equipment you're gonna need that you think you're gonna need. Now there is no specific route in what you need to take in line of, of, of what mods to do first. The route that I took early on is I got some more, I got additional clearance by going with a higher range tire. I got a leveling kit to give me that extra one and a half inches of boost. Uh, and then I put a full aluminum skid plate underneath. Those are generally the first mods that I did. Now, as you can see though, I have a fully kitted out Yucapac camper on top of my Nissan Frontier. We've gone through and done a whole bunch of stuff in the last year to the Frontier as well. Um, as a basic rule, I'll lay out five items and pieces of kit that you should probably have, uh, whether you're a novice or an experienced person, beginner or advanced, these things are a must, okay? First one, uh, and this is like in hierarchy of importance. So first one's gonna be a communications device. Now that communications device is gonna be necessary for you to raise help or to get help if you need it. Cell phones don't actually cut it because depending on where you're going, you may or may not have service. Even on some rural roads and main highways, depending on where you're at, you're gonna find you may or may not have cell phone service. So uh, a satellite communications device is probably extremely important. Actually, no, it's not probably extremely important. Being able to raise help, to get help when is needed is of the utmost importance. Um, so I'm gonna recommend that you either get a cell phone booster or something similar to a Zolio. Um, I currently don't have any of those things here to show you guys today because um, I did have to remove the booster out of my truck. It was just an old booster and eventually it kind of just shit the bed. So I no longer have that which is all right because I haven't done a considerable amount of exploring just because we've been so busy here at the Adventure Factory and wrapping up from Expo that, um, you know, I haven't had to upgrade some of this equipment yet. So again, I'm letting my experiences dictate the equipment that I'm purchasing. This is important when you're somebody like myself and like most of us when we don't have massive corporate sponsorships on our builds and we really do have to consider things like our personal finances when we're building these trucks. It's really important that we do that because the last thing we wanna do is get in over our heads, build a truck that ends up costing hundreds of thousands of dollars or even tens of thousands of dollars, um, and then all of a sudden be forced to have to live out of it. Um, so you still wanna be aware of, of what you're consuming, but a communications device that allows you to get help in the event that you need it is of the utmost importance. Uh, two, is vehicle protection. So that can be either um, a skid plate, a, a full skid plate underneath um, is really, really important. Again, this is just coming from myself, but you wanna make sure that your vehicle is protected at all costs because it's your primary way of getting to and from where you're going. Regardless of where you're going and where you're coming from, that journey in between, many things can go wrong, a whole bunch of things can happen, and you wanna make sure that you're protected as much as you can be. So again, after I put some wheels and tires, I did do a full aluminum skid plate all the way along the bottom of my truck, um, just to protect the things there, so that if I am in a sketchy situation, I'm not gonna damage the vehicle, which would actually prohibit me from leaving an otherwise uh, secluded area where maybe leaving or walking might become difficult, specifically during the winter time. Uh, so protection. Um, number three is probably going to be tools. Now this is actually going to be paired as well with some training. If you don't have some tools to fix your basic uh, maintenance and breakdowns out there while you're traveling, um, you're really setting yourself up for some failure. Now at the very minimum, you should have a wrench set, a screwdriver set, a socket set, um, some vice grips, some mechanics wire, um, some duct tape, a couple extra uh, U-joints, and um, some radiator hose and some fuel line. 
These things are typically what you're going to use in order to band-aid your vehicle to get it out. Um, so really, really important that you guys have tools and basic things, uh, basic parts to, rep to repair things out in the field if you have to. Um, and then again, the training that goes along with that, you can get some really, really good training from companies like ARC 4x4 Training out of uh, BC. I'll put their link down in the description. They come to Expo every year and they help people kind of learn what to do uh, in recovery situations, how to utilize your tools and, and equipment like winches and, and recovery ropes and kinetic ropes and stuff like that. Um, so I would encourage you guys to get some sort of formal training or informal training on that, either just going out and doing it, et cetera. Um, so that's number three. Number four is going to be some sort of bag, some sort of self-sustained kit that you can keep in your vehicle um, in the event that you do have a, a breakdown and you have to then leave your vehicle and get help. This bag should have everything that you're going to need in it for where you're going to be and how long you think you might need it. Um, in, a, in a spot that's easily and ready to get. And I'll show you exactly how that looks in my truck here today. But you want um, some food in there, a way to get water, possibly a shelter, a dry set of clothes, um, a way to raise awareness of where you are. So that could be a mirror, that could be a flare gun, um, and then a means of creating fire and a shelter. And I'll go through exactly what I have in that bag with you guys, if not in this video, in another video completely dedicated to uh, emergency equipment in my truck. Um, so yeah, so that's number four. And then number five, this one is where it gets tricky because number five can be either a redundancy added to your kit um, or something that has a specific purpose. So, all right guys, so number five, um, I'm gonna say that number five needs to be an emergency first aid kit. And I mean like a proper emergency first aid kit um, because it's really important to have this kind of stuff. Now, a first aid, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that you should have an emergency kit. And that emergency kit can be spaced out throughout your build as you wish. But at the minimum, you need to have a, a first aid kit uh, I'm going to recommend an Alberta number two first aid kit, which is what I have in the truck here, which I'll show you guys. Um, a decent fire extinguisher, right? And then redundancy, redundancy. If there's anything you want redundancy and it's going to be in your first aid. So inside this kit here, which is one of my quick access kits, I can actually just grab this and inside here, I've actually got some survival tools and your basic medical supplies. So there's a tourniquet in here. Uh, compression bandages, uh, a face mask for CPR, um, all the standard stuff that you're gonna find in Alberta number two. Uh, this one is made by Advent Adventure Medical Kits, and it's, uh, it's 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 rated from one to four people. So, um, and then on the inside, I do have a full Alberta number two first aid kit that I do keep replenished as well as a burn blanket. And inside this burn blanket, I have six packages of burn gel uh, in the event that someone has, uh, in the event that somebody's going to need um, some first aid help. That's what's gonna number, That's what number five is going to be, guys. Number five is going to be a good first aid kit. Absolutely. Number five, without a doubt, is going to be first aid kits. Uh, first aid kits and, and safety equipment. And a safety equipment kit or emergency response kit... Um, that covers all the bases you think you would need. All right, guys, so I just pulled her outside so we can get a little bit better look at it in the uh, in the sunlight. So there's three main reasons why I personally love the Coastal Off-Road Frontier Bumper. Um, and Coastal Off-Road also makes bumpers for all other makes and models, Tundra, Tacoma, Chevy, uh, Ford Ranger. So if you guys are curious about one of these, I'll, I'll link them down in the description, but the Coastal Off-Road front, front Bumper is a flat pack, meaning it actually comes to you in pieces. So this will be a piece, this will be a piece, right on down to these small insert pieces here and even around back here. These are all gonna come shipped in, in a nice flat package. One, that helps you save on shipping. And two, um, it allows you to build it at your own pace, either by yourself or having a shop do it. Um, and then the, they also offer a uh, pre-runner hoop 
on their uh, on their website. However, this hoop in particular did not come from Coastal Off Road. Um, this is actually a recycled fender from a Mission Overland Summit trailer um, that I salvaged back at Mission Overland, and uh, Jordan over at New Fab kind of gave it a nice little pre-runner style shape there. Uh, now the other obvious reason is the clearance that it gets you. So I'm running a 33 inch tire on 16 inch rims and um, the factory bumper honestly is it's, we're, we're, we're talking probably more than a foot of extra clearance um, just from going with this bumper. Now you do have to trim your top part of your bumper on a frontier to make this one work but that's totally fine with me because like I said it gives you just an insane amount of clearance and then you can see in there I've also got the coastal off-road uh, steel radiator skid plate and there's cat doing her thing so um, now this one also comes with your your cutouts for the fog lights as well and then you got the coastal off-road CO and then I've got a nice fair lead on there with the uh, with the winch um, this bumper also comes off really really easy so it's those two bolts under there and then the skid plate bolts and that's what's going to remove the front bumper and the front skid plate so you can get it off in about five minutes um, however it is quite heavy because this is the steel version we're about a year into this now so this is after an entire year of uh, adventure travel hundreds of miles on gravel roads and you can see that it's still in absolutely great shape there's no rusting or corroding or pitting or anything like that and a lot of that has to do with the Santex powder coating that we actually put on this bumper. So Jordan over at NewFab did all of the fab work and uh, the coating work. So we went with a um, high gloss or a semi gloss Santex coating, which gives it this really kind of rough um, texture, and that just kind of helps keep um, it, it just kind of helps keep from chipping. Um, there is one small chip that I've got right here, um, and that was just from me hucking a hucking a tool in the wrong direction but yeah so that's um that's after a full year guys so as you can see there is some trail scratches and whatnot but that's just in the top coat of uh, the clear coat of the powder coat and it has not broken through one bit and then i've also got the the rigid light bar mount uh mounted on top and then i've got the two rigid pods inside the bumper that carries the smitty built 10,000 pound winch and yeah I, I got to put a different fair lead on here because or at least talk to my boy Richard over at freedom recovery gear and see if I can't get a synthetic winch line if uh, if you guys are looking for pretty savage recovery gear uh, a buddy of mine Richard he owns a company called freedom recovery gear in uh, British Columbia and he hand makes all of his recovery gear. He's got shackles, winch lines, everything you could possibly need um, to get yourself out of a sticky situation while you're out wheeling. But yeah, on the other note, if you guys are looking for a front bumper, um, I'm serious. I get this question more than almost anything else between the Yuka Pack and the bumper. Uh, I'm going to highly recommend uh, a Coastal Off-Road um, front bumper. I'm also going to highly recommend that you do yourself some justice and if you're not really good at welding that you hire someone out to do it and then as well as you powder coat it. Um, painting does really really well as well but powder coating is just it's just as it it's just as expensive as a, as, a, as a real paint job but the longevity you get out of your gear is so much um, so much better than if you were just to uh, spray bomb or rattle bomb it. Not that you can't do that you're you're more than capable of, of banging out a really great product um, using rattle cans, doing your prep work, making sure your surfaces are clean and all that. But uh, really do it some justice and do your vehicle some justice and make sure that it's assembled well because uh, it, is, it is your winch point. So you're going to be pairing that bumper with a lot of stress. So do yourself a favor, pick yourself up a coastal off-road front bumper and uh, keep some of that money in your company, in, in, in your local uh, community, sorry. All right, guys, that's going to do it. So those are some of the things that you need to consider for your ARV. Remember, the three questions that you need to ask yourself is what, where, and how long. Um, you can ask yourself as many questions as you want within those parameters, but what are you going to be doing? Where are you going to be going? Where are you going to be coming from? And how long are you going to be there? 
These are some of the questions that are gonna help you guide what you're gonna to wanna to do to your build, whether that's armor, protection, clearance, um, emergency systems, uh, first aid kits, and uh, survival kits, as well as uh, emergency communications. If you start your build with those things in mind, I can assure you, your confidence outside and your confidence out in the wilderness is going to increase, which is going to increase your experience and your positive experience about it. So that's all I got for you guys today. Keep those things in mind when you're building your ARV. If you think I've missed anything, or if you think that maybe um, I'm wrong, just put down in the comments if there's something else that you think I should have, uh, let me know. Obviously in Canada, we have winter, um, so you need to have some sort of warmth and stuff like that that comes into account. But again, depending on where you're at, that's gonna be one of those things that kind of fall into your three questions. That's it, guys. That's all I got for you today. To, uh, this week, we've got more builds coming in. We've got more inquiries that we have to answer. Uh, we've got some updates to some existing models that we're going to be doing. And um, yeah, stay tuned because we've actually, uh, we're going to be working with some really cool Alberta brands here uh, who have decided to, they want to kind of help in the distribution of the Yucapac campers. So if you guys are from the Alberta area and some in the BC area and you're not too sure if you want to buy a Yucapac because you're not too sure who's going to be available to service them, if need be, Stay tuned because we got some stuff working with some awesome distributors here in Canada. So, I guess now I'm just going to encourage you guys to do something you love. Chase something that you, uh, that you think is worthwhile chasing. And above all, and always, live free. Be wild.